CataractCoach.com. Cataract quiz. Why did this IOL decenter, and how do you fix it without an IOL exchange? Now, here's the patient pre-op. It's in and out syndrome. So one happening in the bag, one outside the bag. There you see inferior translumination defect of where that outside haptic is scraping the back of the iris. That's causing the glare, chronic pain. Here, looking at the inferior angle, you can see there's a radial anterior capsule tear fused to the posterior capsule behind the optic. Ooh, that's the problem. It's already had a YAG laser capsulotomy done. There's some glare from the debris. Here is the tough case. Now, our guest surgeon here is master surgeon, Dr. Steve Saffron, who does these all the time. And he's going to do a full part plane of attractomy, get rid of all that floating stuff back there, all the floaters, all the everything else, make sure there'll be no vitreous prolapse. How do you fix this case? Well, the key here is you got to open up the capsule. So if you want to save this lens and you want to get it in the bag, you got to free up that capsule that's fused, and you got to get that one haptic out of the sulcus and dialed into the bag. So here's the haptic and the capsule bag carefully dissected free. This is the one that's already in the bag, and that's going to be dissected free. And you really want to take your time and open up all the rest of the capsule bag here. Again, this takes time. This looks like a LASIK-type cannula used to inject viscoelastic and also to bluntly dissect. You want to take your time doing a very simple, blunt dissection here. Don't want to break the capsule. Strong fibrotic adhesion there between the anterior and posterior capsule, which you can see. And yeah, you don't want to extend the posterior capsule opening. You don't want to lose support because you want to keep this exact lens. And so again, going around 360 to slowly open the capsule back, injecting a little bit of dispersive viscoelastic at a time. Again, not too aggressive. Because if it's aggressive, you'll cause more splits and tears in the capsule, and you'll lose the ability to have support. So now he's rotating the one haptic that was already in the bag, and now there, the trailing haptic that was in the sulcus is now placed into the capsule bag as well. So the lens has been rotated a few clock hours, and now you easily have both haptics in the capsule bag. At this point, the lens is very stable. It's not going to rotate anywhere. Now, we've learned this lesson long ago. You definitely cannot place a single piece acrylic lens in the sulcus. And that also includes in and out syndrome. You can't have one haptic in the bag and one in the sulcus. It will decenter, and that decentered sulcus haptic will cause problems. And so this case has been beautifully managed. Look how nicely it's cleaned up here at the end after the full vitrectomy is done. Get rid of that Weiss ring. Patient's not going to have any more floaters. Just a really beautiful surgical result. I definitely like this technique. And you can see... The patient has a beautiful outcome the next day. Here's a little LRI to treat that astigmatism. You got to do that. Remember, don't leave any stone unturned. Trocar is removed. And then here we go. Seal those up. And let's take a look. Patient has a beautiful result. I'm sure the patient's very thrilled. Here's post-op day one. Nice. 2025 and looking good. Hey, check out our podcast. Every week, a brand new podcast. Such great material. I promise you will love it.